You know, when you get a PhD in education evaluation, you're taught to try to improve education by doing controlled studies. Um, and I thought I'd try an experiment with you. And I'm just going to think right now back to my own education experience all the way from kindergarten uh, through graduate school and think of the things that come to mind as what I remember because that which I guess I remember may end up ultimately being the most potent and I'm wondering if there's any uh, generalizable truths that may um, emerge, not truths, but uh, uh, interesting ideas about what really matters in education that might emerge. So um, first thing I think about um, I'm going to go start with my kindergarten, I remember nothing. First grade, Mrs. Killen. Oh, right. I remember them putting colored red water in a glass and then a um, piece of celery, and amazed how the red stuff went up the veins. I don't know what good that meant, but it was certainly was more participatory than a worksheet or a lecture. Okay. In the second grade, I had Mrs. Ross. No idea what I did the entire year. The only thing I remember is at the very end, last day of school, I remember her saying, Martin, I want you to keep your mind stimulated during the summer. And she gave me this mobile to put together or whatever, some thing, some complicated thing that was a puzzle that was going to make a mobile together. And I told her I would do it, and I didn't do it. But it felt great to be singled out. That was nice. Third grade, Mrs. Riley. What do I remember from Mrs. Riley? I don't know. I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact that it was just I just thought about the celery before, but all I can remember was her handing out these order sheets for seeds, for flowers, and being so excited at buying four o'clocks and buying marigolds, the promise of, and they, there were no pictures, but I kind of had this vision, I had a little one-line description of what it was on a little manila piece of paper, and the hope that I could make something grow was very exciting. I remember buying a lot, and again, never following through, not planting, <laughs> let alone growing. Uh, fourth grade, Mrs. Alf, Mrs. Alf, there was only one thing I remember for that. She made everybody learn the recorder. Now, I was a pianist. I loved playing the piano. Um, but she had us all learn the recorder, and I loved that. That was fun. This is not inspiring me to feel like education is of any more value than I have previously written about, alas. Okay, fifth grade. Mrs. Hirshhorn. All well, I can remember is she's pretty. She had the most beautiful red hair. She was the only pretty teacher I ever had, at least when I was in elementary school. I'm feeble. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just a retard. Um, what else? Do I Sixth grade, uh, Mrs. Goldschlager. I can't think of anything other than her telling me to sit in my seat when I wouldn't sit down. <sighs> Junior high school. Let me go faster. Junior high school. The only thing that stands out is Mr. Baum. Mr. Baum was my science teacher, and he took a. He said, "Okay, we're not going to do science today. I'm going to teach you how they trick you." with advertising and he used to he taught us the bandwagon technique that you know we jump on the bandwagon everybody's doing it the testimonial you know that if a, a star an athlete or a, a testimonial makes you want to buy it uh i forgot some others but i really liked that that i remembered that was the one fact i seem to remember uh what else that's all i remember from junior high school high school it's so funny i only really remember one teacher John Manfrey, my high school senior English teacher. I remember he had us read the Magus. I ha remember he had us read Macbeth. I remember nothing about any of that. What I remember is he had the most edgy personality. He would say something like, I, he was, I wouldn't, didn't notice it, I didn't know at the time I was such a naive kid, but he was gay, and he was very gay, I guess, in the way he talked. All right, I'm giving you an F if you say one more, you know, but he was playing, and he would make, you know, he would have this book, and he would say, I'm giving you a D for Dunkopf, or something, and that's all I remember, that he was edgy, frightening. It's either a testimony to the impotence of education or the impotence of Marty Nemco. College. First thing that comes to mind, the grade, my only A-plus I ever got in my life, I got an A-plus in philosophy. 
I don't remember what I learned. I remember that they did make us read this source book and reading reading the original philosophy. I remember reading Augustine and Thomas Aquinas and, and Plato's dialogues, and I remember nothing, except I just remember receiving the final exam in a blue book, getting an A+. Plus. No, nothing. Remember nothing. It's amazing, because I just recently took an online course in philosophy, and it was like I had never taken the course in college. It was completely brand new. What else? Oh, back to high school, something I do think about. The most transformative moment. I was always a very insecure, nerdy kid because I was hyperactive. I was not good looking. I was just an annoying kid. Um, and then, but I was able to play the piano. And they had this competition between the sophomore, junior, and senior class that, that got, the first time was my senior year. And because I was a pianist and I could create music, write music, do all that stuff. I became the musical director of this thing called Sing, which was the skits that the senior class would create, original scripts and music, and we would perform it, and the junior class would perform theirs, and sophomores, and then there would be a vote. And I suddenly became from being the schlub to somebody who was really well-liked. And I remember walking, this is nothing to do with school, but I guess extracurriculars count. I remember the only time in my life, I remember skipping down the street with three or four other students saying, we're off to see the Wizard, the Wonderful Wizard of Oz. I was part of the group for the first and only time. Okay. Um, what else do I remember from college? I remember taking advanced expository writing. I was writing for the student newspaper and um, was thinking about maybe doing some writing more seriously. And I took advanced expository writing and I remember getting a B- minus and being really depressed about that. And then... A positive note, art history. That course I loved. That is that did for me what a liberal arts education is supposed to do. It opened my eyes, something I knew nothing about. I really got to appreciate everything. I remember from Giotto uh, all the way to uh, Jackson Pollock uh, and really uh, found that interesting. That was eye-opening. I also, I mean, there was a theoretically should have been eye-opening. I took an English class. I remember I remember the teacher spending a lot of time on existentialism and uh, Ionesco, uh, the Bald Soprano, but I remember nothing about it. And then I saw the Bald Soprano, it's now 40 years, 35 years later, in a theater, and it was like I had never even heard of it back in college. It was, I, that may either be me or, again, how, the, how difficult it is for education to make an enduring difference. Um, what else? Being on the baseball team, but again, that's extracurricular. That also improved my self-esteem. I was not a great player, but I sure tried hard. And just putting on the uniform was great. I had a few great moments, which I won't bore you with. Uh, but that mattered somehow. In graduate school, the biggest thing was getting into Berkeley. That was a nice pat on the back. Getting the full fellowship was really impressive. I didn't believe I deserved it. It was amazing. I, I don't believe I got, I got it. But then I get out of my first class, and this guy, this professor named Robbie Case, I was very scared because I had gone, I was, you know, I, I, I was a very poor kid when I grew up. I grew up in a tenement in the Bronx and then in a duplex in Flushing. And so all we could afford was to send me to Queens College, which was hard to get into, but it was a $34 semester public college. It was certainly no Berkeley. Um, so when I got into Berkeley, I was scared to death. And so my first paper that I got to, that I was assigned for this Robbie Case guy, I killed myself. I literally was up all night, and I started weeks before, weeks before. And he's handing the papers back, and I'm waiting with bated breath. And I get it back, and it says, B, should have been an F except you tried so hard. And B, of course, is the minimum passing grade. I was just devastated. And he said, you must go to the writing center. Now, writing was the one thing I thought I was pretty good at until I took that advanced expository writing course. And... I went to the writing center. I don't think they taught me a whole lot. And as it ends up, I think, as you know, I think if you read my writing, while I have many weaknesses in, in other things, um, I can write. And it wasn't anything that I learned in graduate school. In fact, they taught me to write in an obfuscatory style that nobody could understand. I learned to write by writing drafts of things that I decided I was going to write for the general public and write in plain English and then give it to my neighbors. One was a plumber, one was a teacher, and asked, I begged for feedback. And that helped me to be a good writer. Not certainly. If anything, school made me a worse writer and certainly a more insecure writer. That's all I got. Those are my memories of school. What do I tell you, what do we take away from that? Certainly, I didn't remember a single thing from a single lecture. 
Everything that I mentioned was participatory. Uh, how fragile people's egos are, how ecstatic I was with the A+, plus, how depressed I was with the B-, minus, how depressed I was when I got the B, should have been F paper at graduate school. Even a guy, I'm, I, I don't guess I don't think of myself as insecure, and there I was, completely fragile. So I guess human beings are very fragile. And I appreciate it, while I, I poo-poo self-esteem sometimes, the self-esteem building that came from being head, the head of Sing in high school, the musical skits thing, competition, and playing baseball in college, and getting that A plus, were maybe more valuable than anything I actually learned. So maybe self-esteem is at least worthy of another look before I'm so so dismissive of it. And those are the thoughts that come to mind. So I, I'll throw it back to you. Is there anything that comes to mind for you? What what comes to mind for you as to what's important in education? And if, and if my little anecdotes don't reveal anything. Maybe you want to think back and just take, you know, it's what I did here. I just took, I don't know, is it seven or ten minutes? And think about, it. just go start with your kindergarten or preschool. I didn't go to preschool, but start with your preschool and ask them, what do you remember? What's vivid, what, what comes to mind? Don't struggle with thinking of it. What really comes to mind? Because what really comes to mind right away is probably what's, what's most important in some ways. Um, and feel free to, to write it as a comment on this blog, because I'm going to post this on, uh, on my, blog, my, my blog. For those of you who are by any chance are reading this, uh, or seeing this not on my blog, you can see a lot of my stuff on uh, my website, which links to my blog, and Twitter tweets at martynemco.com. That's M-A-R-T-Y-N-E-M-K-O.com. Thanks.